confirmation hearings for Judge Kavanaugh begin tomorrow, tonight, in just a few minutes. A really fascinating look at Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. The new scene on her original film, RBG, takes an intimate look at the justice's personal and professional life. I'm going to speak with the filmmakers in just a minute, but first I want to show you a clip on her friendship with Justice Scalia. Even though they had differing points of view, they were dear friends. I'm sure they were pecking at each other the whole time, <laughs> but they kind of enjoyed it. Justice Scalia would whisper something to me. All I could do to avoid laughing out loud, so I'd sometimes pinch myself. People sometimes ask me, well, what was your favorite Scalia joke? And I said, I know what it is, but I can't tell you. <laughs> they enjoyed going to get the operas together. They enjoyed um, discussing particular operas. And of course, they appeared together in an opera. With me now are the directors and producers of RPG, uh, Julie Cohn yeah, and Betsy yeah, yeah. West. Thanks so much for being with us. Congratulations. I mean, this film is just, it's got an amazing reviews. It's, it's, I'm excited that people are going to be able to see it on, on CNN. So are we. Yeah, what was, what was the importance of the relationship she had with, with um, Scalia? Well, you know, their friendship really symbolized, I think, a lot. I mean, these are two people uh, very much known for ideologically opposite views. Yeah, completely. Uh, yet who had just huge respect, and as you saw in the clip, even affection for one another. And, you know, in these divisive times, looking at a relationship like that, like, I think there's a lot to take away from and feel pretty good about. Yeah. The, the, the relationship also that you talked about in the film of, of um, R RBG, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll call her. Uh, hey, for that's how she, she signs her name, RBG. That, that's that's true. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the relationship between her and, and her mom, I mean, it was just this extraordinary history. Yeah, I mean, her mother had a tremendous influence on her. Uh, she was a, that she came of immigrants, uh, and her mother emphasized learning, reading, and, uh, you know, kind of imparted two lessons. Uh, to her that she talks about a lot. One is, um, uh, you know, if you're going to uh, uh, find a man to marry, that's great, uh, but uh, make sure that uh, you can fend for yourself. And her, and the yeah. mo her mom wasn't able to go to college. She, she yeah. became a bookkeeper. Yeah. She's, she, is, uh, she has said that uh, the difference between uh, being a, a bookkeeper and a Supreme Court justice one generation in America. And only in America would that, that kind of yeah. take place. Yeah. Also, I mean, uh, the justices' relationship with their husband and the sacrifices, I mean, they both made a lot of sacrifices, but the sacrifices he made uh, are particularly interesting given the times that, that they were made in. Absolutely. I mean, even by today's standards, uh, he was an incredibly progressive feminist kind of a husband, supported everything she did. At some, at some points, that meant taking a back seat so that he could be pushing her career forward. Taking uh, care of child care. Uh, child well, care, all the cooking. <laughs> and, and, and even they, they moved to Washington really for her career. He basically got a, another legal job uh, just so that they could move to Washington. Yes. Yeah, people couldn't quite believe it. They'd say, oh, what's it like commuting back to New York? You know, because they couldn't believe that uh, Marty would have moved to Washington so she could be a judge. What do you think the, you know, she's become such kind of an icon for so many people, particularly young women. Why, why, what do you think it is about her that has struck a chord? You know, I think there's something about this very tiny uh, elderly grandmother who speaks her mind and, um, who stands for principles. Mm -hmm. And I, and what's interesting to us is seeing the audiences that uh, it's across the generations. I mean, older women who come out of the film and they know exactly what Ruth Bader Ginsburg was up against as a young woman when she faced tremendous discrimination. And then you have like little seven and eight year old girls who come dressed up like Ruth Bader Ginsburg, you know, with a collar and glasses and their hair back. I mean, they really identify with her. And the huge millennial fan base yeah. who look at her like literally as a rock star. People lined up for blocks to see her give a you know a talk at a law school, which is usually about constitutional principle, and yet you know people waiting kind of at the stage door afterwards, wanting to get an autograph. Like literally everywhere she goes, we saw this again and again over the year that we filmed. Uh, I'm also amazed. Uh, you were telling me before we went on air, she hadn't seen the film until it actually showed publicly at the Sundance Film Festival. Yeah, I mean, she didn't ask to see it ahead of time, uh, and so uh, when we found out that we were going to Sundance, uh, we asked if she'd like to go, and she said yes, she would. And so we sat across the aisle from her as she watched wow. the film, which was, I would Stressful. say, yes, yes. rather nerve-wracking. Uh, but uh, she seemed to enjoy it a lot, and she laughed and cried, pulled out.
had a tissue wow. pulled up a few times, but afterwards she she said she was very well, happy. Uh, I can't wait for people to watch this, Julie mm -hmm. uh, and Betsy. Thank you so much. Really thank appreciate it. Great to be here. Thank you. Anna. CNN original film uh, RBG uh, starts now. And we watched it already. <laughs> what did you think, Ma? I thought it was fantastic. Yep. And, Presented uh, by. Oops, Julie, congratulations. Hope you got my Twitter message. And uh, gotta have you on my show next.